up to date with The Walking Dead, I'm sure you remember the episode where Carl gets his eye shot out, which is a really cool effect in and of itself, but the episode did end on kind of a cliffhanger, not really revealing if he was okay or not. So I'm sure some of us have imagined what would have happened to Carl if he didn't survive the gunshot, and I thought it would be interesting to explore that, doing Carl as a walker himself. The prosthetics that I am using for this look are gelatin appliances sent to me by Nimba Creations. You should check out their amazing YouTube channel. They've got lots of videos going over how to apply these gelatin appliances, as well as really beautiful paint jobs which are included in their tutorials. I begin by prepping Daniel's face by taking off any dirt or oils or any residue on his skin with some witch hazel. And then I put down a layer of Dermaguard, which is a skin barrier foam. And then a layer of Skin Prep Pro, which is basically like a facial antiperspirant. And it will help the gelatin appliances to last longer on Daniel's skin. First, I'm going to apply this shot out eye prosthetic by Nimba Creations, and I am so in love with this. It looks so disgusting on the fact that there's still a little bit of eyeball, which has been mostly deflated, a little bit of bone showing through, and then all of that meaty texture. It just looks so good on. I am more a fan of this sculpt than the original makeup that they had on Carl in The Walking Dead. I'll start by showing you the alive version of Carl with a shot out eye, and then I'll transition him into a zombie. So first of all I check the fit on Daniel's eye to make sure I know where I'm going to be applying it and then I put down some Prosade adhesive I make sure all the eyebrow hairs are flattened against the face and then I put adhesive around the eye but I don't want to put it onto the upper or lower eyelid just because I know this would make removal really difficult. I also put adhesive on the back of the piece. Once the adhesive has dried clear on both the prosthetic and on Daniel's skin I very carefully line up the piece and then push it onto Daniel's skin. I then add extra adhesive around the edges if they're not fully stuck down. And once that piece is nicely adhered, I then move on to using Witch Hazel to dissolve around the edges. Witch Hazel will dissolve a thin gelatin edge, but if the edge gets too thick, it won't really do much to help. You can see at the bottom of the eye here on Daniel's cheek, there's a piece of the prosthetic which isn't lying completely flat. I think this is just because the face that this is sculpted on is a different size face to Daniel's face, and so this is going to cause a little bit of a problem for us. So what I'm going to do to try and make those edges sit a little bit more nicely against the skin is I'm going to get some Prosade cream. So this is the same adhesive that we use to glue it down, but just a bit thicker. And I'm getting a red stipple sponge, and I'm going to stipple that around the edge of the prosthetic. You can see here there is a bit of a line which isn't blending in nicely and I will have to put a few more layers of Prosade cream over that to help kind of bridge that gap between the edge of the prosthetic and Daniel's skin. While that Prosade cream is drying, I'm going to start painting the inside of the eye. I'm going to start with this bone color from the Skin Illustrator Necromania palette. I'm painting just the top of the eye where there is that exposed orbital bone. Next, I'm using some of the pinks from the Complexion palette to paint inside the eyeball. Now to deepen that, I'm going to add a little bit of the darker red, the red rum color, into the inside of the eyeball and into some of the deeper crevices of the sculpt. I also paint a little bit around the outer rim of the skin where it's been torn open. I'm going back in with a lighter pink just to paint some highlights on that inner eye area just to kind of pop it out and give it a bit more contrast. And now that my Prosade cream has mostly dried, I'm going to put a matte sealer over all of the gelatin piece. This is Bluebird's matte sealer and it has been thinned down with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. This will help the Prosade cream from being sticky to touch and it will also help the blood to sit more naturally on the gelatin. Other gelatins that I have used have been stained very easily by blood and so if you put it down and then try and remove it, it can just leave this weird orange or pink stain. Whereas if you seal the gelatin like I'm doing now, it won't stain as easily. Now I'm going to color match the prosthetic to Daniel's natural skin tone. I'm starting out with a light flesh tone. I think this might be rice paper from the light flesh tones palette and I am stippling that on with a medium sized stipple brush. I also stipple on a layer of Natural One, which is a slightly darker flesh tone. I then move on to a chip brush to spatter the colour on, and I'm using a custom mix of some of the darker colours from the Light Flesh Tones palette. I also use a very transparent layer of Cool Tone from the Complexions palette. Then I go back in with my stipple brush with a mixture of rice paper mixed in with Natural One. To finish off the skin, I'm going to stipple on a layer of transparent pink. So you can see that ledge on the bottom of the eye prosthetic is still quite prominent. It's catching in the light, so I am going to go back over it with some more Prosade cream. And now I'm taking that darker red, the red rum color from the Complexions palette, and I'm going back into the center of the eye. I'm also taking that around the edge of the skin where that has been torn off by the bullet. Now I'm going to start applying the blood. I'm using Mold Life's Blood in Vanille. 
I start by applying it quite messily and dripping it down and using a tissue to smear it. And then to copy the reference image of Carl from that episode, I'm going to apply a lot more drips of blood down Daniel's face. Looking back at this now and in hindsight, I don't think this was the right blood for this look. I think it's just a little bit too thick and a little bit too dark as it ends up looking quite saucy. I think a thinner, slightly more translucent blood would have looked better. Maybe something like Rob Smith's blood. So seeing these drips of blood and realizing it's not quite how I wanted it to look, I did quite a bit of work to try and clean it up. So I used cotton tips and baby wipes and tissues to try and clean up that blood a little bit and just reposition it all to look how I wanted to look. I also went to miss some Fleet Street drying blood in dark just to try to vary up the color and the texture of the blood on the face to try and get it looking a bit more natural. Next I put on the wig and the hat. So the wig was a super cheap wig I got from a costume shop near my house. It was already quite textured but I did give it a little bit of a trim and then the hat actually came as a black hat and I sprayed it brown with some acrylic paints and I bought some gold trimming and tied that around the top. And I used some hairspray to keep the fringe sitting to the side. So this is our finished alive color how look right after he gets his eye shot out. For whatever reason, I love the look of this prosthetic when Daniel puts his head back. I think it just really highlights the look of there being an eyeball there which has exploded and has that hollow center and it just looks so disgusting. To begin our transformation of Carl into a zombie, I'm going to remove all of the blood from around the eye and then we're going to apply this brow piece. This piece actually fit Daniel's face quite well and the edges all blended out really nicely. I started by holding this up against his face to check the fit and then I put Prozade adhesive on the back of the appliance and on Daniel's forehead. Once the Prozade had dried clear, I positioned the forehead appliance onto Daniel's face and I had to trim a little corner that was above the shot out eye prosthetic. Next I glued down any edges that weren't yet adhered to the skin. And then I started to blend out those edges with witch hazel and a cotton tip. Now I'm going to glue down this torn mouth prosthetic, so I put prosthetic adhesive on Daniel's face and on the back of the gelatin appliance. Once the adhesive had dried clear, I positioned this appliance against Daniel's face. And then again I put more adhesive around the edges to help those stick down flat. For whatever reason, the lower lip was giving me a lot of grief, it just wouldn't stick down, it kept popping back up again. So I had to continually put adhesive and then dry it and then try sticking it down until eventually it stayed put. I think the reason might have been that this appliance is just a little bit too big for Daniel's face. Next I blended out the edges with witch hazel, but there were still some areas around the lips which needed some patching. So I went around the edges of the forehead piece and the cheek piece with some prosade cream. I want to do a couple more layers of prosade cream around the lip area, just because that lower lip is still not sticking down properly and there is a little bit of a ledge from the edge of the appliance onto Daniel's skin. Then I coated both appliances with my matte sealer. Now I'm going to airbrush on a mix of the white and the grey matter skin illustrator inks to try to take back any colour in Daniel's face and make him look a bit more dead and zombie-ish. Now I'm realising that the cheek appliance doesn't sit with the rest of the face in terms of its skin tone, it needs a little bit more pink to look natural, so I'm going to add a very translucent layer of pink onto that cheek appliance. I'm also going to add another layer of that prosade cream just to try and patch some edges that I can still see coming through. Now I'm adding a cream makeup around Daniel's eyes just to make them look a bit more sunken in and dead. Now I'm airbrushing on some dark grey colours onto Daniel's skin just to try and break up his skin tone a little bit. I'm also going to spatter the cheek appliance with a little bit of pale yellow alcohol paints just to help it match the skin tones around it. Now I'm hand painting on some veins using the Skin Illustrator vein tone and then moving on to the Skin Illustrator capillary tone. The capillary tone is quite a bit more pigmented than the vein tone so I do go in with a little bit of alcohol either on my fingertip or on a brush just to try and soften those colours. Now I'm going in with the bone white colour again, this time I'm painting it over the teeth on the cheek appliance. Now I'm using the pink tones from the complexion palette again to go inside the torn cheek muscle. I'm going to deepen that with some of the blood coloured red rum colour from the complexions palette. And then moving on to the necromania palette I'm going to grab some of those gross off browns and off yellows and I'm going to put that around the teeth and around the flesh to give it more of a rotted and decayed colouring. Now going in with a clean brush with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on it, I'm just going to soften and blend those colours a little bit. Now I'm going over the prosthetic lips and Daniel's lips to make them the same colour, I've chosen this kind of dead person purplish colour. Now I'm adding a little bit of blood tones where the torn flesh meets the skin. 
and then adding those off yellows and off browns around the eye prosthetic to make that look old and rotted as well. Next comes the blood. So for this, because I want it to be more of an aged zombie, I'm using a dark aged blood. This is Fleet Street in Dark. And I apply it quite messily and then I come in with tissues and cotton tips dampened with a little bit of water just to make it look more worn in and natural. I'm also adding in some cool tones into this cheek wound to stop it from looking like a fresh wound and to turn it more into an aged or a rotting wound. And then we put the wig and the hat back on to complete the look. Then I realized when Daniel was smiling that his teeth looked a little bit too fresh for a zombie, so we added some tooth coloring over Daniel's teeth to make them look a little bit more rotted as well. And here are the gory close-ups of the finished makeup. And you can see the gelatin has quite a lot of movement in it. Now to remove this, I'm using Bluebird's Get It Off Remover as it's quite gentle while also being really effective, but any kind of FX makeup remover you can use for this. And I find an edge that I can get my cotton tip into and I start to move that underneath the prosthetic to break the bond of the adhesive with the skin. I continue this with the forehead prosthetic and the cheek prosthetic as well. And then to remove the rest of that prosate adhesive and alcohol paints on Daniel's skin, we've put that get it off remover onto some cotton pads and we are gently rubbing it over the surface of his skin. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to Nimba Creations for sending me out their disgustingly gory prosthetics. If you want to go as Carl for Halloween, I highly recommend their shot out eye prosthetic. I absolutely love the sculpt on that thing. I think it's amazing. And I will be back soon with more Halloween videos. If you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe here and I'll be seeing you guys shortly in the next video.